Grace, peace, and joy are yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture lesson for our consideration again is from Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah writes, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and the release of darkness, release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide those for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with a garment of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is God's word. Can you believe Christmas Eve is only a week away? Uh, are you ready for it? Uh, are, you, are you prepared? One thing that sometimes happens in my family, maybe it happened or happens in yours too, is, is that uh, my wife and daughter go out and they look for the perfect Christmas dress. Sometimes young girls and, and older too love to find something that's, that's just really pretty and really fun for a Christmas service. It may, maybe you dress up a, a little bit special for special occasions like that, too. You have something special that you're going to wear for Christmas. Maybe, maybe the boys have little clip-on ties or suspenders. Um, I'm probably just going to wear one of, my, one of my suits, maybe try and find my, my nativity Christmas special tie or something like that to wear. But we, we tend to, on the outside, wear things that, that get us ready and excited for the Christmas season. It makes us kind of think about just what we wear on the outside in general. What, what, do, we, what do we wear to church? You know, there's, there's people on different ends of the spectrum on this, and that's fine. Some people uh, dress up, and they have the jacket and the tie or maybe a dress, and they come to church, and they, they wear their very finest. Well, that's good. That's fine. Uh, others, maybe it's more business casual for a guy, maybe the button-up shirt or the polo and khaki pants. Uh, for ladies, I, I, I'm not a fashion expert for ladies, so you, you, wear, you wear what you wear, business casual, or, you know, jeans, jeans and t-shirts, you, you're comfortable. God, God cares more about what's going on the inside than on the outside, so, uh, so we don't really have to worry about what we're wearing on the outside, because God looks at the heart. Today, as we look at God's word, we see that he sees what's going on on the outside with the people of Israel. He sees what's going on on the outside with us, too. The, the things that we're wearing that show what's going on on the inside. But we can fool each other by what we wear on the outside, whether it's a, a smile or clothing. We can fool other people around us. But God sees what's going on. And he gives us something that, that can change even the inner workings of our heart today. Did you catch all the references to, to what God's people are wearing and covering themselves with in this section from God's word? He sees that, that they're covered with things like ashes and, and mourning and a spirit of despair. What's going on with God's people? What, what, are they, what are they wearing? 
Well, this is kind of like last week when we looked at Isaiah 40. Isaiah is looking into the future with God's people. They, they haven't been punished for their sins by being carried off into exile in this land of Babylon. That would still be about 150 years before it would even happen. But God looks into the future, and it's as if he's seeing it right now. He sees the people, and they're being punished for their very real sins. He saw the people poor in spirit, brokenhearted. He saw them being carried off as prisoners into captivity with chains around their arms, being taken to a land and a country that was far from where God promised that they would be. He saw the people internally struggling with this. For some, it was because they had been thinking year after year, God is not really going to punish me for my sins. And then it came. It would come. And they would be covered spiritually and physically in repentance with dust and ashes and sackcloth. That was a way that they expressed their sorrow over sin and their repentance. But you can even imagine the sorrow of the people who were following God's ways and his laws because they were taken away too and punished just as the others. Because at the heart of it, they still had sin in their heart. And everyone was punished and taken away. So now to those people, God comes and he says that he's sending someone who's going to proclaim something very different. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Someone would come, an anointed one, anointed by the Spirit, and preach a very different message than what they were experiencing. They, were, they would be covered in, in sackcloth, kind of a, a burlap that's itchy and uncomfortable, remembering just how uncomfortable their sins have become because they've put up a wall between themselves and their God. But finally, they would recognize the end game with sin, what would ultimately happen because of this broken relationship with God. And the way that they showed that was by taking dust or ashes and either sitting in the dust or covering their head with it. And it was this picture that because our relationship with God is broken and because it's our fault... We deserve nothing more than death. From dust we were made and back to dust we will all go. And after God would punish them for their sin, they would return to him and come back in repentance. But God would have an answer for them because God would look at them and he would see what they were wearing on the outside sackcloth, ashes, mourning, sorrow over sin. But he would give them something that would not only change what they were wearing on the outside, but would change what was going on in the inside. What were they especially mourning, I wonder? You might think death. How that would come, and if they were separated from God, that would be eternal. But remember what else the people would have been mourning if they would have been carried away from the promised land. They had a king sitting on the throne who was descended from the mighty King David, who was descended from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But now there was no king on the throne. There was, there was no one descending through that bloodline. No one to complete this promise of the anointed one, the Savior, coming. So now they saw this death for them and their children and really the entire world if God would let it go on like this without a Savior. So God promised them something amazing. 
He has promises for us too. (laughs) We who come to church today not wearing sackcloth or ashes on our heads. And maybe we're wearing something that to all outward appearances looks like we've got our lives together and we're filled with happiness and with joy. But we tend to wear some things on the outside to cover up what's going on on the inside. Maybe this Christmas season for you isn't filled with with joy and excitement right now, but instead it's got some sadness because you know about broken relationships with friends and family that, that tend to get stronger during the Christmas season. Maybe you have a hard time at Christmas because of family members that you've lost that have, that have passed away and, and gone to heaven. And Christmas was a time you always celebrated with them. And now you're not feeling like you're wearing a, a crown of joy, but instead sadness and mourning. God can look past the outward. We, we, put up, we, we, we put up the facade to other people around us, but God looks straight through that. He sees the mourning. He sees the sadness. But he does something for us that changes us from the inside out, no matter what you're wearing on the outside. God promised to give you something to wear that would cover up the outside completely and even change you from the inside. It's this anointed one. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. That's not Isaiah who is just talking that that he's out there preaching good news, but it's an anointed one, a Messiah, the Christ. Jesus would come and proclaim, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I'm here. And he comes to change you from the inside out. By doing what? By preaching good news. News by proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor that he has eternal joy and splendor in store for you. There's also a a day of vengeance of our God. He proclaims through his word still today the law, that we're separated from him because of our sins and we deserve only death. That is the day of his vengeance. What a year of joy and splendor. The gospel, the good news that the promised one, the anointed one, has come. And he's given you a totally new Christmas outfit for this year. It's not a sparkly dress or or clothes that, that fit just right with a tie to go with them, but it's so much better. Verse 3, he provides for those who grieve in Zion. And bestows on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. What reason do we have for for praising, for substituting joy with the mourning and the sadness? Well, it's because of the outfit that Jesus has given us, that he gives us through his word and invites us to put on and covers up all of the sorrow. Verse 10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God. Why? Because he's clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. That's a picture we've seen it come up in the last couple months a few times in scripture lessons that we've read. That Jesus, by his substitutionary death on the cross, took all of our sins and instead gave us this. A robe of righteousness, sewn together with his holiness, washed clean in his blood, and he gives it to each of you so that it covers over everything. Uh, So that it doesn't matter how the other people in your life look at you. Because when God looks at you, he sees you wearing a literally perfect Christmas outfit. Because he sees you covered in the righteousness that Jesus won for you. And now we can delight greatly in the Lord, rejoice in God. 
with joy like a bride and a groom on their wedding day because God has called us to himself and said, I've chosen you to be with me forever. I've made you look beautiful because I've given you the Christmas clothes to wear. Maybe there's still sadness right now because of sin in this world. That's not going to be a switch that just changes. There's always going to be this mix of joy and sadness. But God has promised you forever joy and a forever gladness. Because right now, right here, he looks at you as holy and perfect to him. So that's the Christmas outfit that you have, that you get to wear, not just next weekend, but forever. Amen.